I have not. You asked if I've ever had a wedgie. I haven't had a wedgie before. You've never had a wedgie in your life? No, I, I haven't really gotten bullied in like uh, a physical. Stand up <laughs> and let Papa give you a wedge. If you didn't call yourself Papa, then maybe I would have let okay, you. Okay, let Daddy do it. Get on over here. <laughs> Are you really going We're to? We're going to give you a wedgie. Are you okay with if Hunter gives me a wedgie? No, right now? actually, hold on. We got to do it. Uh, we'll do it another time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have more questions for I mean, you. I might as well. I mean. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Revealing Your Secrets, the podcast. Today I am here with Hunter March. Hi, thanks for having me. You may recognize Hunter from Nightly Pop on E. Recently canceled. Recently canceled. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. The only reason I had time for this podcast today was because I lost my job. So oh, thank you. Well, I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it too. I've been listening to your pod. It's very funny. It's very, very scary to be one of the secret tellers. Well, do you want to be one of the secret tellers? I didn't know if I was going to share this, but I hit someone with my car on the way here. No, you didn't. Did you actually? I don't know if I hit them or what, but they were, I just was like, I got to get this fucking <laughs> podcast. You had a hit and run on your way here? Yeah, it was two people. Two people? <laughs> Okay, here's the thing about you, Hunter, is that sometimes you're the type of person who you can say something and it's fully false and you say it so sincerely, so I don't know if you're being honest. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't stop to look. I think they're fine. <laughs> because th here's why I think they're fine. Okay. I don't know if they did gymnastics or not, but they both did perfect cartwheels over the car. <laughs> okay, now you're lying. <laughs> It's really frustrating because I'm a very gullible person. Oh, imagine being in a relationship with me. I would probably hate that. <laughs> Most people do. <laughs> so I'm single. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't do as many bits past like the first, you know, dating little dating phase of the thing, and then I realize how many bits I can do with the person. Are the bits like a um, a mask for you? <laughs> Because when you know some people you meet and they're they're all the bits and you're like okay well you're just hiding beneath the bits. Yeah, I turn the bits off when I'm with like when I'm really comfortable with someone. Okay. And then they go away, which is nice. I think when I was younger, the bits were definitely a cover. Right. But now, now that I'm like an adult, unemployed, I'm I'm admitting that carefree, gonna file for unemployment pretty soon. All right. <laughs> I have to tell you though I have watched you from afar since we met that's such a weird thing to say if and if it was anybody else I'd be <laughs> worried about yeah <laughs> but I adore you and I think you're so talented so I'm sure you won't be unemployed for too long no I already Just got it I already got another job they offered it to me two days ago <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> do you know that you're our first guest on this show you do because I, I told you that found that out this morning yeah do you know why no honestly because you offered. <laughs> I wanted to have guests on the show, but I have this like debilitating anxiety about asking people. And you just sent me a message. You were like, hey, love the show. I'll be on it. Like yeah. it was <laughs> impressive how confident your approach was. Well, it's funny. Now that I started doing my podcast, I like just immediately thought of like, well, who does a podcast that I actually like? And then I... The first, like literally the first person that came to mind was you because I've seen your clips all the time. And I DM'd you and I was just like, hey, I would love to do it. One, because I really want to see how it's done professionally. And I, I love like learning stuff like this. But also because I want to I want to be funny and I can't imagine a funnier format than what you've created. It's so conducive to like creating really great moments. And you did it so many times that I saw and I was like, if I could just be a part of that for a split second, I would love it. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you for that. Thanks. <laughs> it's all true. I know. And I actually I've been thinking about asking you specifically <sighs> long before you suggested being on the show. So wow. it was meant to be. It was meant to be. Also. Yeah. You and I already have trauma from working together. So it, it's very s suiting that we would add some more. We have trauma from working to together, though? Yeah. So clearly I was the only traumatized <laughs> one <laughs> from working with you. No, um, you don't remember, like, the nothing comes to your brain when I say that. Trauma from working together? Yeah. Nothing comes to my brain. Okay, well, we used to host a show called Do It For The Dough. Oh, my God. The trauma just came <laughs> rushing back in. Did you suppress it? Uh, it was so deep that when you said that, I said, no way. 
There's nothing. That's bad that's ever happened. That was one of the like hardest things I've ever had to do on camera. Me too. And it's still one of the up. most soul crush. It's I will never look again. <laughs> We're bringing attention to it now, though. It was a show called Do It for the Dough, and yeah. we basically went to like Venice Beach, and we each had a hundred bucks to see how many people we could get to do something not fun, like pour honey all over themselves on the middle of the Venice boardwalk, or eat packets of like Kool Aid powder without water. Yeah. But then the problem was, like, some people, like, you'd get, like, a fun 22-year-old guy who's like, I'll shave my head for 10 bucks. And you're like, you're perfect for this show. And then you'd have, like, a homeless guy come up and go, I'll shave everything on my body for free. And you're like, I this is not going to make it into the episode. We can't do this. And it felt weird. And then you had to turn down giving money to, like, certain people because you're like... This is just, I don't want to take advantage of this situation. But we did, there were moments where we did take advantage of people. I blame it on the producer. I, I do too. <laughs> but like, I mean, we were going to like a highly um, poverty, populated like area of poverty. Yeah. And trying to get people to do like dehumanizing things for money. The one person, the one event that I see his face in my mind <laughs> still <laughs> is we made him shave his eyebrows off. It could have been just me, though, like, because we would go off and do, we were competing, you and I, um, but I, I made some dude shave his eyebrows off. In that episode, I shaved a cul-de-sac into someone's head. <laughs> <laughs> and that one sticks out to me. But, <laughs> but, it was like a young college kid, and I gave him, like, 40 bucks, and he was stoked. He go, I go, what are you going to spend the 40 bucks on? He goes, a haircut? <laughs> <laughs> but he was just stoked to do it. He wasn't like upset. But yeah, I, I regret doing uh, that show. But I was excited to do it with you. We did have a lot of fun when it came to you and I. That's true. It was just the rest of the people. I was like, oh my God. I wonder if we have like uh, karma to pay for that series of events. I was unemployed for about a week and a half. I think that's all the karma. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you must have really grown a lot. Yeah. Do you think people listening to this episode between me and having a fake hit and run and then talking about how hard it was being unemployed for seven days. People are just going to fucking hate me. It's possible. Ugh, it's my nightmare. Okay, I guess we should like start reading the secret. Yes. I could keep talking, but, and we will, but about other stuff. Okay, okay, let's try it. You've got mail. Would you like to performatively read this? Uh, I have to read this one. This one's like the worst. <laughs> That's why I want you. I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll read, it. Uh, I, I, if you, I'll read another one. Okay. 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 Hey, Alex. First of all, I love your videos and this new podcast is dope. Just wanted to get that out of the way while I still have your respect. Okay. So I am a Christian and so is my girlfriend of more than a couple years now. So we're waiting for marriage. Granted, we've had sex multiple times already, but we know we shouldn't keep doing it until marriage because of our beliefs, so we try to restrain ourselves as much as possible. Anyways, long story short, all waiting and no play makes Ben a horny boy. <laughs> this is supposed to be anonymous. But <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, Literally, when I was reading this one, I was like, I'm going to fucking find Ben, a Ben who follows you. And then I know who this guy is. Oh, my God. That's so true. <laughs> Maybe we should bleep his name. <laughs> I don't know. He gave it to us. That's a good point. We'll let the audience tell us, too, based on his behavior, should he be exposed. Right. Because this is some... Okay. It gets worse. So I've done countless messed up, creepy things just because I've been so sexually repressed. I've secretly recorded FaceTimes where she just got out of the shower or is naked just in case there's a nipple slip. I know, so lame. <laughs> I like that he said full, like fully nipple. I also love that he goes, hey, I'm kind of like filming revenge porn without my girlfriend. <laughs> I know, such a dork. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> like, lame is not the word. <laughs> lame is so not the word. <laughs> I've spied on her group chats with her girlfriends since they occasionally post videos or photos where one of them is naked. And to top it all off, I have went so far as to buy a spy camera and put it in my bathroom so I can watch her use it. I know. Totally messed up. <laughs> <laughs> illegal and a total breach of trust. Okay, there's a little bit more self-awareness there, there. That was a big step from Ben. <laughs> I hate and resent myself for doing these things, but it's like I'm so desperate for sex that this is the kind of demented stuff I find myself doing. Regular porn does nothing for me anymore, and I take any chance I can to see my girlfriend naked since I know she won't really do it voluntarily. Again, unless she slips up and wants to have sex, which is very rare. 
also very predatory. Yeah. Alex, please help me. What the hell can I do? <laughs> I feel like this is a very slippery slope into turning into someone whose only sexually sexual satisfaction comes from spying on someone or something like that. And God, I don't want to turn into that guy. I didn't believe he was Christian until he said, and God, I don't want to turn into that guy. <laughs> now I now I'm like, ah, oh, it's a Christian. <laughs> Spotted. That's crazy. I like how he doesn't want to turn into that guy, but he's like, you're you've you've turned into your you're final there. form. Yeah, he said it's a slippery slope. It's like, buddy, you're fucking <laughs> running into the hay bales at the end of the slope at 150 miles an hour right now. The slope's done. <laughs> you're going. I have a f- kind of fucked up reaction to this. You think it's hot and you also, <laughs> you love it a little bit. <laughs> I don't think it's hot, but, and I don't love it a little bit either. If we're going to pick from two options, right? Which is... <laughs> What could the other option be where this one's appealing? <laughs> um, I'm just trying to figure out how to word this. I think it's kind of sweet that the only person who does it for him is his girlfriend. Like, porn doesn't do it. He doesn't want to look at other women. <laughs> he just want, you know, I, but I, and I get the way he's going about it is wrong. He's watching this right now going... Yes, that's what I've been saying. Why is she freaking out so much? How cute is it? Kind of lame. How cute is it that I think this way? I just gave him his defense. You gave him a silver lining. And granted, you can find a silver lining in almost any situation. This one is is a little rough because as he went further and further, it started with just like him taking a screenshot of a, of a FaceTime, which... Right. If I was with someone and I asked her first, I said, hey, can I, I want to screenshot this. And she said, yes, I would, obviously. If she said, no, I wouldn't. But then she, he goes, I'm checking her, her friend's group chat right. to find photos of them. It's like, well, you just said you only care about her. That's true. Maybe it's just her photos that she's sending to her Within friends. the group chat. I, I don't mean to be serious and kind of like not be funny with this, but there's a program that he should check out called Not Being a Christian. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you would, one, it would get rid of all the, like, predatory behavior. Right. It would get rid of the shame involved right. with all of it. True. And it would allow him to avoid going further down this slippery slope that I think is really a uh, free fall at this point. There are other religions he could check out, or maybe none at all. This one, what he has right now, kind of aligns with uh, Satanism. <laughs> I feel like it's not Christian. Um, it's cat. Catholicism, huh? That has a, a reputation for breeding like pedophilic priests. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> how, how much do you want to go? Do you want to go against the church right now? <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> I don't know how far we go into that, but without me getting in trouble with the Catholic Church, do you have ties with them? My dad's the Pope. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't believe you. Yeah, the whatever his name is, the guy from South America or Central America. Isn't that the Pope right now? I don't know. But you know what I do know? Hmm. I'm going to say something fucked up. Your dad's a DILF. That's not fucked up. He's pretty hot. <laughs> I I would record your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to stay with a straight face as long as possible, but I couldn't. Um, I would secretly record your dad. I, my dad would, you wouldn't have to secretly do it. He would perform. He would literally do a little dance naked and then (laughs) he'd be like, what do you want to see? Ass, balls, cock. (laughs) Oh man. My dad's a whore. I love, and he's okay with you saying that? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) No, he's okay with it. He knows he is. He's like, we've talked about sex in our household since I was like 10 years old, like without abandon. It's. I have a quick question for you then. Okay. Before we move on, in a previous secret, someone was talking about having the same sexual interests as their mom. And we're like, is that hereditary? Something that you get from your parents? Was it a woman talking? Yeah. Mm. Does that make a difference? My question is, are you and your dad into the same stuff? Fetishes? No, not. I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, down the middle of the road, but also I will go into all the extremes, but I don't really have a fetish or a kink. Mm -hmm. Like I've tried everything. I would do anything. Everything? Yeah. Just about. Okay, we'll have to loop back with that. <laughs> I don't like loopbacks. So that 
ask one and I'll say yes or no. Okay. Oh my God. Have you, um, I want to think of a real weird one. Well, I shouldn't say weird. Pegged. Oh, have you ever been pegged? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Listen, here's the here's the thing. I don't want anything shaped or in the motion or like I don't care for peni. Right. Do I love ass play? Sure. Okay. Toys in everyone's butts? Great. Um yes or no answer, please. Uh you don't have to. You don't have to. I don't want to push you. Pass on pass on that one, but with a wink. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever done ABDL play? Adult baby lover play? No, now <laughs> you're just getting into very specific ones. Uh, you said you tried everything. Yeah, but adult baby diaper love play is not, that's not a part of everything. That's that's on the outset of everything. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff we hear on this podcast, and to me, it's a part of everything now. You know what I mean? Like, what yeah. I'm exposed to, to me, I'm like, that's the norm. Okay, everything that, like, someone not on TLC would talk about, <laughs> okay. I've done. Okay. But if it's like a TLC fetish, I probably have not tried it. Okay. <laughs> no TLC fetishes. But like, yeah. But like all the basic stuff. All right. Well, I will probably loop back to this later. Great. So. Can't wait. Let's move on. Okay. So this is kind of bad and maybe illegals, but whatever. So I work at Subway and all of the people I work with are little bums and talk bad about me. So instead of ignoring them, I instead decided to record them on that voice recording app during my shift to see what they say about me. Turns out they did talk bad about me, but I'm also kind of addicted to doing it and I always listen to it at night when I'm doing homework or playing Minecraft. It's kind of nice because it makes me feel a part of something and I pretend to be there talking with them. I know it's wrong, but it makes me feel all warm inside. That's that's epinephrine taking over your body from the anxiety that's making you feel warm. That's not like a good feeling. <laughs> Why does this make me so sad? It's really sad. I I will say the only part that I'm happy about is when it started and it said this may be illegals, but I work at Subway. I thought she this lady was coming in the tuna or something. <laughs> like I was like, oh no, this is bad news for how many times I had Subway. As long as they're not coming in the tuna. <laughs> which by the way, if you're gonna come in anything and get away with it, it's it the tuna. It would be tuna. Yeah, it which is the tuna. part that freaks me out because that's what I liked at Subway. That's your order. Well, you know what they they did that study in the UK that basically like. The bread at Subway isn't even considered real bread, and the tuna at Subway is like barely tuna. And turns out it's 50% this woman's cum. <laughs> How do you say things with such sincerity? It's called being a sociopath. <laughs> Are you you must be a good liar when you need to as well. Really good liar. Yeah. I never I but that's the thing is I'm so open about everything, like with partners especially. That I don't ever really want to have to lie. Like, that's mm. really scary to me if I have to lie. I see. I hate that feeling. You would be able to pass with flying colors if you needed to. Oh, my God. But yeah. you don't want to need to. Yeah, it gives me so much anxiety, but I can do it really convincingly. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I think I can, too, to be honest. Two truths and a lie. Right now? <laughs> yeah, the rest of the episode. <laughs> okay. Um... I actually didn't want to tell you this because I thought it would be really weird, but I have DM'd your dad before. That's okay, a lie. That's one. Okay. My other. My name's Alex. My last name's Wise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I'm not a good liar. That was you kind of went with a, a pretty outrageous one. Um, all right, my two truths and a lie. Uh, I. Didn't actually hit anybody on the way to work today. Like on the way here, I didn't hit anybody. Yo, I know that's the truth. Already fooled you. Did you really hit someone? Two people, today? yeah, and they and they hit two more people. It's like uh, when you get a seven <laughs> right, ten shut split. Up. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Anyway. To this person's secret. We seem to have a theme in this episode, uh, illegally recording people. Yeah, it's like the Tinker Taylor Soldier episode of your podcast. It's all spy-related stuff. This, to me, I will say, it's the same as like looking at your ex's Instagram after you break up. Mm -hmm. And you think that like it's a good thing for you. Like You think you need it for some reason. Mm -hmm. But it is an addiction because it's something you 
kind of feel shameful about, yet you compulsively do and you're not able to control it. Yep. That's what this is. And it makes you feel, well, at least this person is like hearing people shit talk them. Same, same deal. You look at your ex's page, just makes you feel bad about yourself. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. Yeah. I think about how lonely you have to be to like want to listen to people shit talk you just be so you have someone talking to you or about you at all. I, to my core, understand the loneliness that's making them behave this way. Really? I just feel like I handle it like most other people and I have parasocial relationships. You do? Yeah. Like with who? They're not so much celebrities as characters. Like I'm still really sad about the cast of Community. And I finished watching that show like four years ago. Like those are my best <laughs> friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? I guess so. So I I do what they're doing, but in like a less self destructive way. Do you not way do that less self at all? I don't do that. Oh, I'm I'm kind of the opposite. Where like if I have feelings, I go not today, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just suppress. Yeah, but I've gotten better about like you know opening up the top of the bottle and letting some of the tension fizz out right, without that's exploding. Good. That's good. I cried earlier this year once. That was nice. Earlier this year. Yeah, like February, I think. <laughs> what happened? I was just really sad and I couldn't figure out why. And then someone was like, who'd you cry to if you wanted to cry right now? I was like, nobody. Do you really not cry that often? I cried yesterday. I legitimately have probably cried from emotion uh, less than 10 times in my whole life. Do you go to therapy? I did. And I would just ask the therapist like, so what do I do about like legacy? Like, do I care about my legacy? Should I? You know, it's more like very superficial questions about mm. mostly about work related stuff or right. about like my being. But we never really tapped into the emotion stuff. And then I dated this girl who was like, you could cry if you want to. And I was like, I do want to. And she's like, you want to cry? I was like, I kind of want to. And then she's like, cry. I was like, nah, that shit's stupid. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm not going to cry. And then. She was like, you should find someone in your life to cry to. And then I went to my best friend. I was like, hey, man, I'm going through something. It's hard for me to tell you this, but this is what's going on. And then I teared up for him. Aww. And then he opened up to me in a way he'd never opened up to me before. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I don't love this culture we live in where men aren't meant to feel feelings. No, I it agree. good for you. And that's it's why not you're good. cracking so many jokes. <laughs> I mean, it's true. No, knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> I don't know who I am. <laughs> Everything hurts. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I'm I'm in a really good place now. That's good. <laughs> Do you know that? There's like a meme online about people saying that they're in a really good place. It's just like. Really? Yeah, I, I don't know. You just, you aren't if you say that you are. Well, the. Maybe those people aren't, but I am. Yeah, you're the exception. I'm in a really good place. Well, so I guess our advice for them is to maybe... I think for them, what they're doing is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Like it's the unhealthier version of, of two sad things. The other option is to sit with your feelings, learn to love yourself, be by yourself. Don't let people's thoughts kind of come in, their thoughts come into your head and make you feel less about yourself. It's almost like they're validating her negative thoughts about herself. She needs to start sitting with herself and just almost doing like affirmations. It doesn't, have, you're not the greatest person in the world. You don't have to say that, but just say, I'm worth other people's attention. I'm worth having good friends. I'm worth this. I'm worth that, you know? I don't disagree. Well, look at us. And the silver lining of this submission is that we just gave them life-changing advice. Yes, we did. I think the silver lining is the, the tune is safe. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> All right, let's move on. So I have a secret that I haven't told anyone, not even my friends, and I would love some unprofessional professional advice. My boyfriend and I have been together for three years. I love him very, very much, but lately the attraction hasn't been there. Oh, no. I think it has to do with his dental hygiene. <gasps> He hasn't gone to the dentist in years. <gasps> Definitely more than three because he hasn't gone since we've been together. I know it's kind of shallow, but sometimes when he goes down on me, I accidentally think of all the plaque and I get kind of grossed out. The word plaque is really viscerally disgusting. Well, it's just really disgusting because like I've never gone to the dentist because I saw plaque in my mouth <laughs> and was like, I got to get to the dentist. Like I've never seen plaque. Right. They tell you it's there, but... They go, they scrape 
the, like all the roof of my mouth and gums. And then they go, you had a little bit of plaque. And I go, really? And you had to chop up my whole fucking mouth for that. <laughs> You've seen plaque on other people, though. I don't know if I... Um, I think I have. I think I've seen it in photos that are in dentist's office. To demonstrate office. plaque. Yeah. But I don't know if like, I've ever looked at someone and gone, oh my God, you have so much plaque in your mouth. I... Uh, you know someone with plaque? <laughs> I, know, I know someone with plaque. Wait, also really quickly, I just want to say kind of an interesting thought about the word plaque is that there's two definitions and one of them is very desirable and one of them is very undesirable. Interesting. Just something to chew on. Well, don't chew on plaque. <laughs> That's, yeah, well, that is interesting. But yeah, I, I actually, I dated someone for a minute who didn't brush their teeth before bed. <gasps> I know. I know. It was longer than a minute. <laughs> and and then oh, this is so fucked up. I'm but I'm just trying I'm being honest. This is Thank my you. life experience. Thank you. I ran into them m- much much later and you know, you can kind of see things more clearly as time passes and the plaque <laughs> like gathered in that that's so fucked up. I feel bad for saying that. they're not watching. Yes, they are. <laughs> they love you and they're still watching and this is <laughs> devastating to them. Um, I, my dad had really bad teeth for a long time and he would never smile. He never went to the dentist ever. And then, uh, he had to get all veneers on the top row of his mouth. And then he had to like fix the bottom row of his mouth. Cost him like 20 grand. So that's what this guy's in for. But Mm. at the end of it, really hot. (laughs) Anyway. He has this friend who is so hot. Okay, took a turn. <laughs> right, right when we get back into it. I definitely have a crush on him. And sometimes when my me and my boyfriend are having sex, I close my eyes and I think about him to get myself turned on. Sometimes it doesn't work because I feel guilty, but most of the time I just remind myself that I would never act on it. And I let my thoughts take me where I need to go. I really feel bad about it, but if you saw his friend, I think you'd understand. <laughs> I've asked my boyfriend to go to the dentist thinking it might help, but he just tells me basically he's scared, which not going to lie is also kind of a turnoff. I don't know if this is normal. We have an incredibly healthy and loving relationship. He's my best friend. I don't think I'd act on it, but I'm scared that one day it's going to come out in some terrible way that I have this crush. What would you do? I, I love that she starts the whole thing by being like, so my boyfriend, the bad one in the story, has plaque. Me, the good one, wants to fuck his best friend. <laughs> That's such a good point, Hunter. It's like it just turned. I like she got real cocky in the first half. <laughs> and then in the second half, she's like, and here are my flaws. <laughs> oh my God. And um, I gotta say, I don't actually think there's anything wrong with thinking about someone else. I don't think so either. But never have I ever been in a happy relationship and thought about someone else. Mm. Yeah, I think in a long enough relationship. I That's what I, because I haven't been in a really long, healthy relationship. Well, a lot of, uh, you know, again, most of the time you shouldn't have to. And if you're doing it repeatedly, it might be an issue. But there also could be a night when you're tired. I think it's different for guys, too, because we can't as easily fake an orgasm. Mm. Like, if you're not a Twinkie, you know that I didn't come. Well, I don't understand. If you're not cream filled by the end of it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. That was <laughs> really, I, that was too much for me. If you don't look like a toaster shootle by the time we're wrapped uh, up. Okay, got it. Do you not like guys or something? I, <laughs> I honestly do, but it's just, I guess it's like the food language that's really not doing it for me. Yeah, like, you- I like being coming. <laughs> I just said to you, you no, felt it. I just wish that, like, the spice cumin <laughs> used that line. Like, I just like being cumin. And uh, that's their new tagline for all of cumin everywhere. <laughs> oh, you, we should pitch it. I'll talk to, I'll talk to the cumin guy. Yeah. I go, cumin, don't you think that's a little less catchy than cumin? <laughs> Big missed opportunity. Um, yeah, I, I, it's harder for a guy to fake it. So, therefore, there are times where to not make your partner feel inadequate to not make them because you know their mind will run wild even if you say like i'm really tired i had a long day it's hard for me to come right now we had sex an hour ago whatever you might just have to go ahead and think about their mom for a little bit right to get yourself to finish it's just ironic that in order to make them feel better you're doing something that if they knew what you were doing would make them feel worse that's a that's what relationships are built on (laughs) 
<laughs> That's basically the theory that all healthy relationships are built on. Also, I don't really know what to do about the teeth thing. I think that you you just got to let him be. I think you got to find a guy who's not afraid of the dentist. That's it. That's literally. Bare minimum. Like, you could be afraid of the dentist, but then go. Go right. to the dentist. Right. And be afraid of it. Or make Crest Whitening Strips a fun <laughs> Relationship activity. I do wonder if those would affect plaque. I mean, he, she should like buy him a water pick. She should buy him like really fun teeth thing that you can have at home that like actually helps. Like water picks are great for plaque. And this is bad. This is bad. My 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 grandma used to buy my sister's Zoe soap <gasps> every year, and I think when you buy someone to help them, buy someone something to help them with an issue that you've identified as an issue, it's just offensive. Did she smell? I guess. I don't know. I you was, don't smell, though. I know. I know. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. It's Thanksgiving Day. It actually is Thanksgiving Day, the, the day this episode goes up. Really? Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> so this is perfect. It's Thanksgiving Day, and my mom told me to prepare the turkey. Before she told me, me and my boyfriend were sexting, and I was really horny after that. I took the turkey and brought it to my room and started humping the turkey. My mom saw the turkey wasn't in the kitchen. My little cousin heard noises coming from my room. My mom and my little cousin walked in and saw me humping the turkey. I'm regretting not asking you to read this one. My mom started screaming, and my whole family rushed in and saw me naked on top of the turkey. Let's just say my mom never told me to prepare the turkey after that. Happy Thanksgiving! Could you imagine if the next year they were like, we're going to give you one more chance? <laughs> She actually did prepare the turkey. Yeah, but for it the to wrong my little occasion. Slut. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's it's on- so sad that she got caught, you know? Um, I think it's in everyone's best interest that she got caught, but I really think it's on the mom for not specifying what type of preparation the turkey needed. That's a good <laughs> point. Right. Cuz if my mom says, "Hunter, can you stuff the turkey?" <laughs> Turkey's getting fucked. <laughs> We just move on now. Oh, really? Yeah. So we're going to end on that note? <laughs> Do you have anything else to say? No, that's really it. That's good. Every time I leave the house, I imagine myself getting into a fatal accident and my parents cleaning out my apartment after my death and finding my sex toys. I've been trying to find a solution to this problem for years now. I've even considered putting them in a locked box and leaving them, leaving a note with one of my friends to throw it out in case of my death. Well, I recently went on a trip to the U.S. with my family. We live in Europe. And these thoughts got so bad that I threw away my sex toys the day before the trip because I kept on imagining us dying in a plane crash and my grandparents having to find my sex toys. It's been two months now, and I miss them every day. (laughs) I, I, I got a few thoughts on this one. Sure, let's hear them. Two solutions. One... You put them in the bottom of a clean trash bag with like paper towels crumpled up on top in your trash. And that way, if you go on like a trip or something, you just open up the trash bag and they're still clean. There was never any trash in there, but nobody's ever going to check your trash. That's a really good idea. The second, more effective in my opinion, put them in a box labeled things these damn neighborhood kids keep throwing in my house. (laughs) (laughs) Am I missing a reference? The box with all the sex toys is labeled things these Uh, darn neighborhood kids keep throwing in my house. Therefore, you don't own them. I don't own them and I want to return them to those darn kids. (laughs) And then my final thought is your grandparents aren't going to be alive when you die. That's true. They're most likely going to die soon. That's true. I have one more suggestion. Okay, tell me. They can throw away the sex toys. They already did. Mm -hmm. Collect sex toys that also act as everyday objects so that no one knows that they're sex toys. Like the girl who we just spoke about. Yeah. Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah. No one would know. Everyone knew. Everyone (laughs) knew. That's true. As long as they don't walk. Yes. How many things around us (laughs) on this very set? That's Alex. Ew. I can smell it. How would you know? Because I've got like a... I'm very... Oh, it's like a skill you have. One of the skills I have, like some people are like good at basketball or they're great at chess. I can tell exactly what a woman's vagina smells like mm. just by looking at them. Mm. And I'll tell you right now, bergamot. What? 
For everyone who's just listening to the podcast, Hunter just keeps picking up an anteater that we have on set and smelling its nose. Remarkably phallic nose, to be fair. <laughs> Could fit in any hole. That's true. That's true. Okay, stop sniffing it. I have to move on. Let's go to the next. Stop sniffing it. It's like a Cabernet. Go ahead. <laughs> so my secret is there's... Hunter, you read this one. <laughs> This one's also fucked up, but okay. So my secret is there's this girl I know that works at this bar. And I know she's also a sex worker. She has an OnlyFans account and I'm subscribed. I watch her videos all the time. She also posts her sex work ads on Twitter. So I know she works at this massage parlor. But I really want to go and book some time with her. But I've never paid for such a thing before and I wouldn't know how to go about it. I feel like it would be really awkward to go to one. But I'm really attracted to her. I don't know what to do. The other side of this is that I also have a girlfriend I've been dating for two years now. <laughs> would it be considered cheating if I paid to sleep with this other girl? It's just sex and that's all it would be. Anyway, that's my secret. <laughs> That's my secret. I love that they do. Anyway. <laughs> I love that they've sincerely contemplated whether paying for sex makes it any less cheating. What? What do you mean? Like, they asked, would it still be considered cheating if I paid to sleep with the other girl? Like, as if paying makes it better. Makes it more expensive. <laughs> And right now, that's worse for me. True. Um, yeah, I, I think it's obviously still cheating. I just love how everyone who writes in these things goes, there's this girl I like. I want to <laughs> sleep with her. Is it bad? Also, I'm married. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, fucking put that at the top. Let us know why it's a problem. Are these people, I, first of all, I don't think you should pay for sex. I think sex work is fine. Do your thing. But as a guy... Or as a, as a woman, I think if you can't avoid it, especially because you're in a fucking relationship, you should. I agree. It's yeah. a good rule of thumb. Try to get it for free. Why, Try to get why it for free. spend money? Send her a DM. Try and talk her down. Right. Right. That's your <laughs> advice to this person. It's a good idea. That's crazy. This guy's got a lot of insight into this woman's life, though, and it's it's on the precipice of full stalker. Like, you know where she works. You know what her secret job is. You want to, like, book time with her. You've probably looked at her schedule a hundred times to see if she has, like, openings. That's true. It's Aww. very weird. This poor girlfriend. I want to play a game with you, though. I'll play a game with you, too. <laughs> Let's play a game. <laughs> this is the game. I want to have a debate uh, over, over justifying why paying for sex actually makes it less cheating. And which side do I have to be? Which one do you want to be? Uh, I'll be whatever one's funnier. So paying for sex doesn't make it cheating. Yeah, that's true. Okay, 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 great. Uh, well, you start, because obviously I'm right, so I don't really need to say anything. <laughs> to the jurors, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Cheating is cheating. But is it? Is me going to the store and buying a video game I love that I spend hours playing away from my girlfriend cheating? No. No. Do I love that video game? Yes. Yeah. If I go to a restaurant and I buy a delicious meal, a transaction, and I eat the meal, I go down on the meal, I eat out the sweet potato casserole right. and the filet mignon, and I lick my lips after tasting its sweet juices, is that cheating? No. So if I fuck a prostitute, are we really going to get that mad about it? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good argument. That was a good argument. Yeah. It's a transaction. No, I don't believe that, by the way. If you cut out me saying I don't believe that and just leave in the rest of it, I'm going to be able to do nothing because I signed a release form. <laughs> do you ever look back at parts of your childhood and realize you've had a kink for a really long time? Like you watched a show as a kid and, and something happened in an episode that made you feel a certain way. But at the time, you didn't understand what it was. But you look back at it as an adult and go, oh, wait, that's the same feeling I get when I'm turned on. I was into that as a kid because I do. I noticed this with a few of my kinks, but just recently I realized I have a transformation kink. For me, it's just the idea of transforming into an animal or an inanimate object that turns me on. And I look back at these moments of my childhood and so much just makes sense. Like there was a scene in Wizards of Waverly Place movie where a woman turned into a parrot. And I remember liking that part a lot for some reason. So, so much so that I wanted to rewatch it again and again. It's not like at the time I knew I was aroused or that it was linked to any kind of feeling down there. It was just that the scene 
made me feel a certain way in my gut and I wanted to experience it again. And I realized that that's the same feeling I got for a lot of specific scenes and shows. Back to Wizards of Waverly Place. There was episodes where Alex shrunk herself and pretended to be a doll or the dad turned into a giant cockroach or where Justin was being turned into a statue. All of those gave me the same feeling as a kid that made me like the episodes and want to rewatch them over and over again. And I just now realize it's because I have a transformation kink and so much makes sense. I know it's a thing that kinks can develop because of some traumatic thing that happened as a kid, but I don't have any trauma that could have spurred this. That's the case with all of my kinks, to be honest. I don't think they developed out of any experience. I'm just like this, lol. Think about how much this person would come if they read the Animorphs books. <laughs> Certainly they have, no? Oh, if they don't, I mean, they could be young. They're like Wizards of Waverly Place, you know, generation, which is like what? like That was like my generation. 25 to 30? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's Animorphs too. I feel like Animorphs was a bit earlier, no? Than you? Yeah. Yeah, that's me. I'm like 31. Okay, yeah. So that I, Animorphs, I, I read a lot of Animorphs, but I was never like, oh, this fucking pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that I could get turned that anyone could get turned on by this yeah these people are also attracted to the worst animals getting turned into a parrot who the <laughs> who wants to fuck a parrot wait scroll down what was the other one cockroach. a cockroach well what like the actual most disturbing living creature on planet earth yeah give me a leopard or an alpaca with those eyelashes oh my god so true yeah they're so seductive yeah and they spit <laughs> That's okay. a real win. That's good. What That's animal? True. What animal would you fuck? What animal would you have sex with? Uh, well, we learned here today that I would fuck an anteater. Yeah, because <laughs> I have. Because I did. I'm not gonna smell it again. They have really long tongues. Oh, they do. That and they know ass how to play? use them. What if I don't really like ass play? Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> What if, how crazy it would be if an ant, if you were dating an ant eater. Right. And he was like, can I go down on your ass? And you're like, I don't really, I'm not really into it. And then he's like, trust me. I know what I'm doing. And you go, okay, I'm nervous. And then he goes, don't be nervous. Like, it's fine. You have a drink. And then you guys get into bed and okay. you're making out. Right. And then he starts going down on you. And then like, he puts your legs up and he starts going down on your ass. And then all of a sudden he's pulling out like so many ants. <laughs> like, it's just ant after ant. Like, there's an ant hill in there. That would be pretty crazy, Hunter. <laughs> I guess I would be grateful that I let him in. He's cleaning up house. Yeah. And there's no more ants in your in your tummy. It's really good. Okay. Next time an anteater offers <laughs> to eat my ass, I will say yes. Arthur. Next time Arthur comes around. Arthur. Yeah. It's either you get I'm a fan. He's an he's a is he an aardvark or is he an anteater? Oh, he's an aardvark. That was offensive, oh. what, what we just did. Oh here. no, the aardvark <laughs> community is gonna lose it. <laughs> Uh, my mom actually is like a, an anteater fanatic, so she might <laughs> she, You were going to say my mom actually loves ass play. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I thought you were going with this. She could. I just don't know. I don't know that about her. I don't take her as... Let's call her. What's her number? <laughs> Nancy? Nancy? Oh, you do? <laughs> oh, that deep? How many fingers? Oh, Two hands? Please stop. Nancy, more like antsy. <laughs> Yeah. I have a thought about this. Okay. So I actually think that the transformation kink makes sense in a very deeply profound spiritual way. Okay. Explain. So, you know, we're all connected. Yeah. Everything is one. Mm -hmm. So I think something about a transform, like a moment of transformation is like the embodiment of that concept. Like, you know, Alex's dad is a cockroach. And and this sign and this phone and you, you know what I mean? And so like there's something about that moment where you're like, oh, that's like a cosmic truth. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's like a little hard to follow. No, no, no. I follow it. I okay. just think this person's got a Wizards of Waverly Place king. <laughs> like I think this person likes wizards changing into shit. And it has nothing to do with spirituality. I think that could be true as well. But I, I, I like that beautiful theory. Thank you. What you can, is that what you do in every episode? Just find the positive in these people's weird secrets. I have come to do that. Yes. That's nice. Do they ever get mad at you if you don't? If you if they go, hey, I said you my secret, but like I didn't really like how you talked about it. Blah blah. blah. First episode with a guest. It's when it happens. Let's check the comments. I'm gonna fuck 
Uh, yeah, because then they have to comment from the actual account. Be like, hey, I'm not the guy, <laughs> but I just want to say, if I, I think was. it's okay to film your girlfriend in the bathroom. Sincerely, not Ben. <laughs> His account is like, Ben. For our going public segment, Hunter, mm. we are about to speak to the following secret submitter. Hi, Alex. My secret is that I have a wedgie fetish. Mm. I honestly don't know how it started, but it was probably from cartoons when I was younger. So as I got older, I figured I would experiment, as one would do. So basically, I would give myself wedgies, sometimes randomly, just to see. And I would also try to hang my boxers off the top of my bedpost to see if I could actually do that, lol. I also have had done it to my sister a couple of times as well. Anyway, as I grew up, I found out that particular fetish has a pretty large community. So as I dabbled with that, I became more intrigued by it. I guess you could say, and no, it's something that I basically use to masturbate with. So basically, I guess long story short, I get off to wedgie porn. Mm. That's my secret. And I guess what's your advice on it? And have you ever gotten one before? Ever gotten a wedgie? Not one that I came from. Yeah, I know there's a difference, right? Yeah. There's two types of wedgies. But now looking back at all the wedgies my brother gave me, and I gotta go talk to that little pervert. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? No, I, I, listen, whatever your kink is, fine. Are we going to talk to this person? Yeah, let's get him on. Hello. Hi. Okay, how so are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm great as well. Thank you for asking. Uh, so before we begin, I just want to say I'm, I'm here with my friend Hunter. He's a guest on today's episode. So we're going to be talking to you about your secret. Hi. We just read your secret. Nice. <laughs> what did you guys think of it? Pretty well, interesting. It is pretty interesting. I do have a few questions for you. My my first question is just, you said that you would hang your boxers off the top of your bedpost to see if you could actually do that, but you didn't say if you could. True. Uh, sorry. So I was, uh, so this was back a long time ago. I was like, you know, like eight, nine, you know, I was like, when you start, you know, as a boy, you start getting a little curious then, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so like you kind of have a feeling knows. like, I know. Yeah, like, and like, so like, obviously, like growing up with like cartoons and stuff, you saw that type of thing. And so I was like, you know, I wonder if I can do it because um, I should start by saying I, I had a bunk bed. So that's why I had those that posts. Makes more so you like, had some real distance so like, to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So like that, but then like with the bunk bed, obviously, like I had it since I was younger. So my parents, like, you know, just in case, you know, you can't just like climb up there. So like, th there's, there was like a little like step ladder, like that had like two or three steps. So it would work because I could just, you know, stand, go up to like the first or second step or third step or whatever, and just try to see if it worked. I mean, it kind of did. I mean, like basically what I could do is like, I wouldn't like, I kind of like hang there, but like, I kind of just like, I kind of like step off the ladder, but it was only like six inches from like, like the ladder to like the bottom of the bed. So I kind of was, but most of the time what happened, it would just like rip. So, I mean, it kind of worked, but kind of not. Have you ripped a lot of your underwear? Well, like, back then it was only a couple pairs. And then like I was to like, this eh, day, I though. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. You stopped doing I mean, it? Or do you yeah, still do yeah, yeah. it? No, I stopped doing it now. I, uh, um, I stopped doing it. I only did that. That was only, like, I guess, like a phase. You know what I mean? Like, that was only kind of, that was like a phase, really. <laughs> or, um... Like a couple months, and then I was like, "All right, I'll stop doing that." You but know? do you? St but you watch wedgie porn now, but you just don't do it to yourself. Yeah, yeah, I don't really do it to myself. What's wedgie porn? Most of the time, it's just old videos from like TV shows or like you know content creators like talking about it, stuff like that. Other times, you'll see like pictures of it, you know, just like of it happening. Right. So I guess like that's the best way I could describe it, you know. Um, that's so, why I kind of said that part. If you're watching a film and someone's getting bullied and they're getting a wedgie, like that, to, that's pornographic to you? You're Well, well, no, I wouldn't say it's pornographic. I guess that would just give me, I kind of just get like hard if that happened, I guess. I have a question. Uh, are you like living in your heyday right now with like how women's athletic pants are, how they all look like they have a wedgie? Like, do you go into a planet fitness and go like, oh my God, is this heaven? Dude, going to the gym in college was so much fun. <laughs> like, 
I say that as a joke, but I say that as a joke, but you know what I mean. mean I say that as a joke with 100% sincerity. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's got to be a little bit uncomfortable to have that, but it's a style thing. We've been wearing thongs for a while. It's nothing, you know? Yeah, it's a good point. I also, I will say this, when I'm intimate with a partner, there's a moment, sometimes it happens every once in a while, where I will grab like above their, if their underwear is like above their pants, I'll kind of grab it and pull it up a little bit. I don't give them a wedgie. Right. But just that little bit of like. It's like a wedgie tease. It's a little wedgie tease. I feel like it's an it's a sexy thing to do. Yeah. Is it? Uh, yeah, no, I like it. I actually, I prefer when it's being pulled in the other direction. Like from the front? Yeah. Right, 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 Not right. like aggressively. But right. Like I would rather that pressure. <laughs> In the front, <laughs> not the back. Yes, agreed. You know I mean? Absolutely, just, just agreed. a tip for you too. Um, but but what would you say makes like how can you give us? I okay. I have not. You asked if I've ever had a wedgie. I haven't had a wedgie before. You've never had a wedgie in your life. No, I, I haven't really gotten bullied in like uh, a physical. Stand up <laughs> and let Papa give you a wedge. If you didn't call yourself Papa, then maybe I would have let you. Okay, let Daddy do it. Get on over here. <laughs> Are you really going We're to give you a wedgie? Are you okay with if Hunter gives me a wedgie? No, right now? actually, hold on. We got to do it. Uh, we'll do it another time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We have more questions for I mean, you. You might as well. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I, obviously, I'm not your producer. So it. just listen oh, to your producers. My God, that's so funny. Only- that we were like, let's not do it, and then and then he goes, well, I mean, for for research, maybe you guys should just maybe you guys should give it a go so that for science. I'm with you, man. I agree. Oh, well, I mean, I never said that part. No, no, I'm, I'm fucking around. But that's it was so funny, dude. I'm with you. I agree. No, well, you. Well, okay. If we do do it, or if I do it another time, yeah, yeah. with my myself or with someone else, my question is like, do you have any tips on how to give a good wedgie? What constitutes a you know a, a pleasurable wedgie? Okay, uh, well, I mean, I've only done it a little bit. I mean, I've only, I haven't really. Um, I've only done it like a couple times. Like I did it to my girlfriend once or twice. I did it to my sister, but not really much. I mean, you don't want to like, I guess it depends on the situation. I feel like, cause like, like in that one, like if you guys are just like screwing around and like, you know, like that, like a good one is you want to get like, you know, just a good, you know, a nice, good little tug, but. A good little tug. When, so are you with your girlfriend now? Like, are you guys I'm still not, together? Actually. Okay, when you were together. Oh, I, oh, oh yeah, 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 we're still together. I'm not with her this current second, but oh, yeah, okay. uh, yeah, we're still together. Great. Yeah, yeah. When you, did you ever bring up the wedgie thing to her? Like, hey, by the way, this is a thing I like, or did you just kind of do it and not tell her it was a thing you like? No, I, 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 didn't, I mean, I didn't come straight out and be like, hey, this is this. I kind of tried to slide it in the conversation a little bit first, so I didn't like catch her off guard with it. And then eventually, when she was like, what? Like, eventually, when she kind of started realizing it, I was like, oh, by the way, it was this. And then she was okay with it during, the, like, the right time and stuff, you know. So you were like... Because I didn't want to come out... You were yeah, like, I, I hey, let's... I like, on the first date. Let's go get dinner. What are you in the mood for? And then you're like, maybe, like, a iceberg, like, a blue cheese iceberg salad. And they go, what's in that? You go, well, yeah, what's in that? And you go, it's a wedge. <laughs> a wedgie. I mean, speaking of wedgies, I mean, sort of, sort of like that. I mean, we we're kind of talking about like, I guess a good example would be like, you know, for us growing up in like, <laughs> like two thousands twenty, uh, like twenty tens and stuff. Like, so we talk about like a lot of shows. So like, we would mention stuff like one of the, like, for me, one of the most famous ones that people talk about is like an iCarly with and stuff like that. So like, we would talk about shows like that. And then that would come up, and I would kind of, so it's kind of go off of that, and then I would, um, and I, I would do that first to kind of see if she was comfortable with it, and then I would tell her afterwards because I didn't want to go right in and be like, oh hey, by the way, on like on like the first date, because mm. you know I wanted to get comfortable with it first. I have a right. question. So you you've given your girlfriend a wedgie. You've also given your sister a wedgie. Were you turned on when you gave your sister a wedgie? Like, was it a little incestual? No, 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 no. I wasn't that. I was just thinking it would be something funny to do. But no part of you was like, and this is hot. Well, not like that it was my sister. That Not that part. But I was like, oh, this, this might be funny. And then just, like, 
I I don't want to say I got aroused by it, but like I mean, I got that like I mean my wiener uh, filled I mean, up with blood. The, yeah, 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 yeah. But I but I it wasn't because it was my sister. It was because of what was happening. Right, and it just sense. happened to be your sister. Well, no, I mean, I was thinking about it, like, she was, I think she was doing, like, laundry, like, doing the dishes or something, and she had, like, headphones in, and I was like, you know what, she can't see me or hear me behind her, so I might as well just do it. A little sneak attack. Yeah. <laughs> you said that you found a community of wedgie lovers. Is this an online thing or an in-person thing? And I have read online that people have things called pulling parties. Is that true? I actually haven't heard of that. I mean, like, I so to go to the not back to the first one, as like Hunter was saying earlier, for research purposes, I guess we'll use that term now. Um, <laughs> as I was getting like into it, um, yeah, you know, I would like search stuff and see what would come up, and then people found like there were these like chat forums and like websites like that. Like, that's basically what I meant by like the community of it. Mm. So, that, that's kind of like what I would do there. But, and then, like, on those forums, you would see people say, oh, you know, people for meetups, yada, 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 you know? And But you never so went I, to a meetup? Personally never, yeah. I've personally never done that, but and I'd never heard that term before, like you said, Alex, but that wouldn't, but, that's, but that makes sense if that's what they are calling it. You're going to lose your mind when you go to your first pulling party. I'm telling you right now. It's a human centipede of wedgies. <laughs> Hunter, have you been? You've heard of push parties, right? <laughs> Women get together, celebrate the birth of a baby. Uh, wait till you go to a pulling party. It's a ton of waistbands and a ton of palms. You're gonna fucking love it, my guy. So, so it's a mixture of human centipede and a uh, baby shower. Got it. You make everything sound worse than what I said, and I make it sound pretty bad. <laughs> if you got invited to a pulling party, would you attend? I mean, it de- uh, it depends. I mean, it depends, like, obviously, like, distance-wise and, like, everything. Because, like, I have, I mean... <laughs> I love that. Right, I mean, logistically, <laughs> only a few-hour drive is what you'd... Yeah, what's, mm-hmm. what's the amount of hours you would have to drive to the point where a pulling party with, like, let's say six people, three men, three women... Is like too far. Where you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. You have a free Sunday, free Saturday. I mean, like, like, like realistically, like, I mean, if it's like an hour, like if it's a, like if it's like driving distance, like that's probably. What if it's an eight-hour like drive, like, oh. but they're allowing you to spend the night, and there's going to be a pulling party the next day too? I mean, theoretically, I'd probably theoretically it'd be. Uh, I could probably do it. Um, okay, let's say you had to drive saying, across like, the country. It's a three-day drive, but it's a full weekend of pulling parties. I mean, I'd have to find... I mean, it sounds enticing. I'd have to find, like, an excuse to do it. <laughs> but, like, to be like, hey, why are you going across the country? Oh, um, well, oh. for this reason. But, I mean... What's the reason you would say, by the way? Just so we know. Oh, I wouldn't say it's for that. I would be like, oh, I have this made-up relative that died, and I have to go to their funeral. Who are you lying? Like who that. are you lying to about it? Is it your girlfriend or like work? Well, no, no, I meant for like work purposes. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Yeah. Would you want to I bring like your girlfriend? Purposes. Would you want to bring your girlfriend to the pulling party? I mean, I could see if she would want to go. She may or may not want to, but I, but I, I'd see, I'd see if she would. Real prude if she doesn't want to go, in my opinion. <laughs> Pulling parties to me are kind of like base level. <laughs> base. All right. So I've my uh, my final question about the distance you would go. Say you had to drive across the country, get to the opposite ocean. So now you're at the Atlantic Ocean or something. I don't know what side of the country you're on. You have to swim to a boat that's a mile out. Okay. You have to take that boat across the Atlantic Ocean, like an oil tanker kind of thing. You have to get all the way to Europe backpack your way through six different European countries, end up in, of course, Amsterdam for the mega, <laughs> the biggest pulling party there is in the entire world. Would you do all that for the ultimate pulling party where it is wedgie after wedgie after wedgie? I mean, that's, that's a lot of work, too. I mean, I don't, I'd have to, <laughs> I, mean, that, I mean, that's a lot. I mean, if I'm getting, like, paid or, like, reimbursed for that, like, I mean... 
Probably, but I mean that's a lot of that's a that's a bunch of work. Would you just reimburse to, him just to do that? To support I mean, him? Yeah, I'd pay. It's probably like you know four hundred bucks in gas, maybe five hundred bucks in gas right now. You, you sneak onto a boat. You know, I'm not paying for the boat. Um, just hang on to the bow. It sounds like a no. You're not going to Amsterdam. I mean, if I can fly to Amsterdam, maybe, but I'm not going to try to like swim through the ocean, especially like, I mean, you could like, that's a long, <laughs> I mean, that's a long trip too. So I don't know. Cause but I just feel like if I did that by the time I get there, I'd just be tired and I wouldn't enjoy it. Right. Mm. So. I wouldn't even enjoy the pulling party that would be like, my hands are tired from the that's swim. That's true. I got to be honest, after all this talk of a pulling party, I'm a little, I think we have, we should go and Hunter and I are going to have a pulling party. So, Hunter, unless you have any other questions. No, it was really nice meeting you. Thank you so much for opening up to us and sharing this very interesting part of your life. Thank you. It was nice to meet you. Yeah, it was nice to meet you guys, too. Uh, th thank you for um, considering my uh, secret. Of course. Of course. Uh, I didn't really know how to naturally end that conversation, so I said that we were going to have a pulling party. <laughs> I thought it was a great way to end it. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. So... <laughs> No. <laughs> I thought you did a little turnaround for me. <laughs> We're not going to. No, we can't because he's going to watch as well as everyone else who's into that. And then right. it's. We're just giving them content. We're giving them. I don't want to be. At least put it behind a paywall. Yeah, please. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a very interesting. I've, 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 it's, it's hard navigating someone's fetish that they're kind of uncomfortable talking about, but willing to talk about. And yeah, I think there was a little bit of a chat, like a communicative challenge and um just like uh, directly talking about it yeah i, I feel like there's got to be a little bit of shame there and mm -hmm. stuff which is fine i get it mm -hmm. Every, a lot of people shames or a lot of people with kinks and fetishes have shame involved but hopefully with whatever it is especially if it is consensual which hopefully it is for this person now moving forward uh, and not waiting for someone to have headphones doing the dishes <laughs> who's related to them yeah uh i think as long as it's consensual you shouldn't have any shame about your kinks or your fetishes. I agree. You know? And I hope he does find himself at a pulling party one day. I really hope he does. Yeah, I'm rooting for him. Nothing would... If this show was Vice, the next episode would be us taking him to a pulling party. <laughs> you know? Like, that's real That's real production value. But I hope he gets there. Me too. For today's round of a pause... Ooh. A little something special we do at the end of the show to treat ourselves, feel better after reading some heavy stuff sometimes. Mm. So today's kind of a choose your own adventure for you. Okay. Because it's Thanksgiving, we could go back and forth and say what we're thankful for. It's kind of a fucked up holiday, whatever. <laughs> uh, or you could talk a little bit about something you, like some sort of self-care that you do or tool, affirmation, anything that improves your life. Well, I'm I'm thankful for. Okay, uh, so you chose the former. Let me finish. Okay, I'm thankful for this form of self help that I do regularly, and I'll tell you what that is. Mm. You see how I did both of them at the mm. same time? No, I I think I'm thankful for my friends and family. Like right now, I'm in a good place. I've got some good people. That's so lame. I mean, I appreciate it, and I'm really glad that you what are. What the <laughs> fuck is this? A round of applause, my ass. This is like you're just being. Oh, you're right. You're right. Uh, you're right. It's just everyone. That's like the thing that everyone says. Fine. You know what I mean? Fine. Um, I just got a text message from the police department saying that the people that I hit lived. <laughs> so you're grateful for that. I am grateful for that. I'm really sorry to you and your friends and family for what I just said about you just shitting on the fact that I'm thankful for them. Yeah. I don't I don't accept your apology and I want you to live in that guilt for a long time. That's not nice of you. What are you thankful for? My friends and family. <laughs> it's a good answer, isn't it? Yeah, and it's true. I will say this sounds cheesy, but being on this podcast, I'm very thankful for. I think it was really fun. Um, I'm honored I got to be your first guest, and I hope that my appearance on it doesn't make you never have guests again. <laughs> you know? You've traumatized me. In the best way, I hope. Yeah, in the best way, that, sure. I'm taking that anteater home with me, by the way. Ew! <laughs> I just see you at home sniffing it. Um, I would even go as far to say, I'd have you on again. Whenever you want. 
whenever I want. I'm about to get you having free labor on this show. (laughs) You free next week? Free? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's great. Before we go, I just want to say Hunter has a new podcast called That's News to We Mm -hmm. with your friend Alex Ovedia. Yeah. It is such a funny podcast. Thank you. You talk about topical pop culture news stories. Yeah, but we make everything funny. We don't actually want to talk about anything serious. So if you want the real news, go watch CNN and Fox. (laughs) Or have a good time. And go check out That's News to We. Have some giggles with us. We're really just trying to make everyone laugh like I think we tried to do today. All right, I tried to do today. You were very funny, but I think you also had to balance the fact that all these people are revealing their secrets to you. Right, a little sense- sensitivity. But you're required. funny. This is a good podcast. If you guys like this podcast, I think you'll like mine. You should check it out. Really, I was listening to the show- listening to it in the shower yesterday, and I was having a real laugh. Really? A real laugh by myself. Good. Yeah. Well, the next episode is dedicated to you. We do Mondays and Wednesdays. Monday's episode is dedicated to you. No, it's not. I swear to God. Are you serious? I'm really dedicating it to you right now. And I'll even plug your podcast at the end of mine. Say, I made an appearance on this podcast. You guys should go check it out. It's dedicated to me? Like in in spirit or like the whole episode you're talking about? (laughs) The whole episode. All seven (laughs) stories we normally do are just about (laughs) your life. I'm expecting to see that on my feed. Yes, yeah, so if you guys want that, go subscribe to uh, our podcast. You'll see it. That's news to we. We'll leave it in the show notes and the description box on YouTube. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Don't forget to follow, rate, and review Revealing Your Secrets wherever you listen to podcasts. You're only as sick as your secrets. So send them to us. Go to speakpipe.com slash revealing your secrets to leave a voicemail or fill out the anonymous submission form at the bottom mm-hmm. of my show notes. Today's episode of Revealing Your Secrets is a production by Cast Media. I'm your host, Alex Weiss. My producer is Eddie Montalvo. My associate producer is Brandon Klein. My executive producers are Colin Thompson and Harris Lane. My editor is Bobby Semmelsberger. My technical engineer is Dustin Park. And design and animations by Jeff Schweikart. See those you next names. Time. The fact that you got all those names. Round of applause for that. Thank you. Schweikart and Semmelsberger. <laughs> Jesus. It took me a while to get that right. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well done. I'll take it. Well done to me. I'll see you all next time. <laughs> <laughs>